I don't know anything about CC. I'm just trying to convey to her <laughs> that she's communicating with people that are associating with people that I'm suing. And I had no problem with this girl. I don't even know who she is, to be honest. I didn't have a problem with you, Cece. I don't even know who you are, really. I've seen a couple of her videos on MLMs, and I saw that she had done some videos on Andrea. But beyond that, I don't subscribe to her. I don't follow her. I've never seen her, like until today, I had never seen her Instagram. Well, allow me to introduce myself then, Katie. Hi, I'm Chelsea, also known as CC Suarez. Here on YouTube, I make commentary content, mainly focusing on anti-scam, consumer awareness, multi-level marketing companies, things like that. And also I do cover unethical influencers as well. We keep things assertive, rational, and spicy over here. That sign right there that says stay spicy, that one right there, it does not say stay sploy, just so you know. Today's video is going to be a long one, so buckle up. I will be adding the timestamp chapters so that, you know, you know what's coming up. However, I don't suggest skipping forward or anything like that. Not because I'm trying to, you know, get that audience retention up, but because we're going over a lot of information. We're going to be debunking a lot, explaining a lot of things, and I don't want you to miss anything. And I hope you learned something along the way. So grab a snack, get comfy, and let's get into it. So in this video, we're going to be going over a bit of background on Katie's time here on YouTube. We're going to be going over defamation, doxing, deflection, hypocrisy, lack of professional reporting, and other common fallacies that can be found within her content as well. But before we go over all of that, as if I don't have enough disclaimers in my title cards and in my description box, let's go over a few quick little disclaimers. Today, we'll be covering public figure and self-proclaimed reporter Katie Joy of the Without a Crystal Ball YouTube channel. Everything stated within this video is my own opinion and not intended or said with any type of malice whatsoever. I am not trying to take Katie down. This is not a hit piece and I do not want to in any way deplatform her. Everything you see in this video can be found publicly via the internet. Please do not seek out, engage with negatively or harass, bully, just don't talk to anyone that I have mentioned in this video, please. As always, do your own research, think rationally, and form your own opinions. Katherine Paulson, more commonly known as Katie Joy or KJ, runs the YouTube channel without a crystal ball. Her channel was started on October 1st, 2018, and since then she has amassed an audience of over 245,000 subscribers and over 128 million total channel views. I would say that she is most commonly known for her coverage of trashy reality TV shows, but I feel like most people, in my opinion, know her from her legal escapades. To be more specific, she was the drama channel or just the YouTuber that was sued by Tati Westbrook, also known as Glam Life Guru, a beauty and lifestyle YouTuber, for defamation. Many people on YouTube refer to her as the most sued YouTuber. However, Katie refers to herself as a blogger and a reporter. Prior to doing a deep dive on any individual, any public figure typically, I will always reach out to them and ask for a statement. That is professional courtesy, in my opinion, that should be standard across the board. Most of the time, my request is just, is just ignored. And then sometimes I will receive legal threats and a cease and desist, or sometimes the individual responds with a very rational and professional response. That didn't happen here. That's not what went down in this case. I reached out to Katie a few days ago, and I sent her what I and many people who have already seen the email would consider a very rational, professional, and assertive email requesting a statement regarding many claims that have been made about her, not things that she has absolutely 100% done, but claims that have been made about her. So let's read that and her response, her five responses, including the Facebook post that she made and the two live streams that she did about it too. Now, this was the email that I sent to Katie Joy on August 6th at 8.09 p.m. Good evening, Katie. I'd like to give you the respect in letting you know that I am working on a video in regards to some of the controversies you have been involved in during your time on YouTube. The following are some of the topics I will be discussing. Doxing, harassing, and threatening other creators. When another creator calls out your behavior, your typical response includes digging into their tax information, past behavior, or even their private family members' lives. Claiming that you have sources close to a topic that you're covering that may not be legitimate 
in order to legitimize the information that you are presenting, repeatedly copyright strike, copyright claiming other creators' content, regardless of the Fair Use Act, the claims you made regarding Tati Westbrook's husband during the Shane Dawson investigation, directing people to the LA County Sheriff's Office and speak to a deputy slash detective who hadn't worked for the Sheriff's Office in years, claims that you have made, quote, no money from the numerous YouTube videos and Facebook live streams regarding the Von McRae situation, claims that you have weaponized your following against other creators, speculation that you are the individual behind a YouTube channel by the name of Nonsense using a voice changing filter. If you would like to give a statement on any of these topics, I would be happy to add them into my video. There is no obligation to respond if you don't find it necessary. I will not be stating anything as a fact if it cannot be backed up with hard proof slash evidence and I will remain professional and assertive. I am purely reaching out as a courtesy. Now this is Katie's first response. Hello, Chelsea, please do not use this in a video. I have a lawyer and I will be forwarding your email to them. Due to the fact that you are sending me information that is false, I know you are receiving information from people that we are seeking discovery from in multiple lawsuits. We have requested discovery related to multiple people and will be subpoenaing them. We might need your records because the information that you are providing to me is false. I have no interest in being exposed for the 1000th time over false accusations, which all of the claims you are presenting are false. I can name off the top of my head the people you are speaking to which many of them have already received letters to not destroy evidence for my pending defamation lawsuit against a convicted felon. I have not struck anyone's channel falsely ever. The deputy you claim didn't work for the sheriff's office, in fact worked for the SVU unit, and it is easily fact-checked. It seems that you have been given false info, which again, I am copying my attorney to. We will likely be sending you a letter to not destroy evidence, and if need be, will be needing any communication you have with these people for our active defamation lawsuit against a reality star. Thank you. Graham copied for your information. Please send Miss Suarez a letter to not destroy evidence for the Chrisley case and pending litigation in other cases. Katie sent from iPhone. So I was going to like read all of them first, but I can't. I have to I I have to break this down. Typically during my deep dives, I do have my dog in another room. Um he did just have surgery a few days ago, so he like does not want to be away from me and he just came barreling into my office. So if you hear snoring, it's not your dog, it's not your refrigerator, it's my bulldog. I'm not going to apologize for it. He lives here and you don't. So, I will try to edit it out, but realistically, there's not really anything I can do. And honestly, that and Kid Cudi are the soundtracks to my life. This is giving manic. And of course, that's just my own interpretation. To me, I think she said the same thing about three times in a row. And it, it, it is just meaningless. Saying, please do not use this in a video. Oops. <laughs> now, one thing that is absolutely hilarious to me is that she's so sure that I'm using all these people that are part of hate groups and that she's so sure of who I'm talking to and that they are my sources for this video. Katie, I don't know how to break this to you, but you are the source for my video. And then to my surprise, I received two more emails from Katie, one at 8.21 PM that said, also, I do have verified sources and I'm not nonsense creator. If you claimed I was, that is defamation. No. It's not. If you could read with your own two eyes, I said speculation that you are. Also, the person behind the nonsense Facebook page and YouTube page has sent voice recordings with her, with what she claims to be her real voice, not using a, uh, a voice filter. And another YouTube creator, I'll put her in the description box. She even included that in her video of this whole mess and says that it's absolutely not her. So, I guess we'll just have to take her word for it. Um, but absolutely not. That is not defamation at all because I didn't state that it was a fact that you are that person. You would think that someone who has been sued for defamation so many times would understand that. Yet here we are. If you are going to do a hit piece, at least verify what you are digging into. An hour later, she responded and said, 
One more, Tati Westbrook's lawsuit is settled, and there was a joint statement that no defamation occurred. Again, easily fact-checked. So the thing is, is that if you read the email, I am speculating, it is of my opinion, I think, I'm not saying this is a fact because I don't know, I wasn't with her reading my email, but I don't think that she actually read uh, my email in its entirety because if she did, she would have seen at the bottom that it said, I'm not stating any of this is fact. Um, I think that she reacted emotionally um, instead of rationally, which seems to be a trend. Now at 9.55 p.m., I responded to her and said, while I do appreciate your quick response, Katie, I am assuming you didn't actually read my previous email in its entirety. I never stated any of the topics I listed above were true. I even said at the end of the email that I would not be stating anything as a fact that was not proven to be so. I was looking for simply a statement regarding these claims. To my knowledge, I have not been in contact with any reality star or anyone you have been involved with in a legal manner. I am under no legal obligation to refrain from including this correspondence in a video. By all means, feel free to have any letters or legal threats sent over. And then she responded at 10.03 p.m. and said, I will no longer comment to you directly. My lawyer has your information and they will be in contact. Your claims are all false. And I know you were live making wild accusations about me last night and making a list of people I effed over so that you can expose me. I was not making wild accusations. I wouldn't do that. And again, let me be clear, my sources, of course, like links and videos and documents, all that, of course, I will have linked below, but my main source for this video is Katherine Paulson herself. And if anyone is exposing Katherine Paulson, it is Katherine Paulson, not me. So now that you have seen that correspondence and both sides, let's go ahead and review the Facebook post that she made at 9.31 p.m., which it seems like that was after her third response to my one email. Let's get into it. Without a Crystal Ball says, YouTube creator CC Suarez is now doing a expose slash hit piece on me based upon all false information and easily fact-checked claims that are false her favorite word false. I cannot fathom a creator literally getting tips from haters and contacting the person over the false claims while admitting they are investigating the easily proven false claims as some sort of gotcha moment. Cece Suarez will be contacted by my attorney who was copied in my reply to her that she not destroy any evidence or communications she received because again, all of this is false. For instance, I don't strike channels falsely and rarely ever strike anyone. The sheriff's deputy she claims doesn't exist. I never said he didn't exist. I said that he was retired and not assigned to that case because he wasn't assigned to that case. The sheriff's deputy she claims doesn't exist, works for the SVU department and is, and is easily fact-checked, not to mention this happened three years ago. It's 2022. It happened two years ago. It happened in 2020. The amount of time that has passed since a specific event happened does not make that specific event irrelevant or mean that it didn't happen. Tati Westbrook lawsuit is settled. No defamation occurred because they realized I got the details from a public lawsuit. Didn't she say that she had like a source for that? Anyways, funny thing is I didn't ask about the lawsuit specifically. I asked about the claims that she made regarding Tati Westbrook's husband. Just because you weren't found guilty does it mean you didn't say the thing that you said about her and her husband and her family? You still said it. Claim that I'm the nonsense YouTube channel. She can't be serious. Why well, I wasn't accusing you of it. I said that there is speculation. Claims I dig into people's past. Coming from other creators that literally published my R report and monetized it. But that actual claim is coming directly from blank blank. I will be censoring out this name, not because it's doxing, because it's not, but out of respect for this creator, because she has specifically requested, not to me, to the public, that people don't use this name for her anymore. So I will be replacing it with the name that she prefers now, out of respect. Um, also, I've never talked to that creator, so you, you, didn't, you didn't debunk what I just said. Claims I dig into people's pasts. Is that true or is it not true? We will find out later in this video. But of course, this is a great example of deflection and 
borderline blame shifting as well. So you're accusing me of this, but they do this. Katie, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about you. I don't care about them. I'm sure she's a sweet girl. She's got a really cute accent. I love how engaging she is with her audience. That's, that, does, that doesn't matter to me. I asked you. I didn't ask her. For transparency's sake, I did email the other creator that she's referring to, LB. I did email her. She did not respond. And that's fine. A lot of times that happens. I literally put at the bottom, don't respond if you don't feel it necessary. And that's okay. This creator publicly accused me of child abuse, falsely accused me of striking her channel, held a fraudulent fundraiser because I took her channel down. After this creator falsely accused me of child abuse and falsely accused me of stealing her kid's Christmas, I tried to figure out what her motive would be for coming for me. Sure enough, she was in bankruptcy at the time. Why would her personal finances have anything to do with that? But of course, another great example of deflection. So this creator can lie about me and spread false information, but if I try to figure out why and share that, I'm bad. Yeah, if, if you're blasting people like that when it has nothing to do with what with the situation at hand in order to, in my opinion, I'm not in her head, I don't know, it's just my opinion from a bird's eye view, uh, to try to discredit them, yeah, that makes you the bad guy. If this other creator did all these things, then yeah, that sucks too. So then she's the bad guy hypothetically, and then you would also be the bad guy. Two things can be true at once. Either way, in a hypothetical situation like that, you both lose. Now, although this creator, LB, um, although she didn't give me a statement for me to include in this video, she did do a live stream addressing all of this, like this entire thing. And so I will link that below so that y'all can watch it. I watched the entire thing. Listen, it was like three hours long. It was really good though. And make up your own opinion. Do watch it if you want to. But to me, it, it didn't seem like she was lying. This creator has since discussed my R report and accused me of lying about my R, lawsuits involving me, my arrest, and has dug into my life for three years. Katie, I don't care. <laughs> why are you include? Why are you including this? Again, this is all deflection because I believe, again, it's just my opinion and me watching all this happen. Um, I am of the opinion that Katie possibly thinks that I am getting a bunch of information from this person when I'm not. I sent her an email, she didn't respond. I've watched one one video of hers, two, two videos of hers, three, and that's it. We have not had any contact other than that. And it's all been one way. <laughs> so technically we have not engaged at all and I have not received any information from her other than all things that have been posted publicly. And again, my main source for this video is Katie Jor herself. How many times are the same fake claims going to come out before these people realize none of this is real? CC, stick to MLM stuff. I haven't watched your channel in a long time. Someone told me she's publicly saying that I'm speaking to her in my lives. I have absolutely never said that. I think that this is, not to be redundant and say a great example, but I think that this little blurb right here and other things that I have seen from Katie Joy, other posts, other live streams, things like that. I think that she at times could possibly, it's just my opinion, not stating that she does this, um, she possibly just believes what any of her subscribers, followers say to her and then just takes that as fact maybe. Because if someone said that to me, I before I posted that, I would have watched the live stream. I would have watched the video instead of just trusting someone's word. I would have looked at facts. I would have needed to see evidence and proof in those words coming out of someone's mouth instead of just believing that that was the truth. Also, it does seem like, from what I have seen and in my opinion, that Katie Joy tends to hold creators accountable for the actions of who she thinks are their followers. And I think hypothetically that she does this because as a creator, to have that like simple of an explanation of why someone does not like you at all, that just makes it easier to take. So for instance, I do make a lot of anti-scam content. I do make a lot of content regarding multi-level marketing companies. So a lot of people will say, you know, when I'm reading hate comments, I do those types of videos. Or if I'm posting one on my Instagram, something like that. Or if someone makes a video about me and I, and I talk about it in a live stream, whatever the case may be, some of my subscribers will comment and be like, wow, you know, these MLM huns are so delusional. They're so unhinged. But I do have to remind them, not everyone who doesn't like me is in an MLM. Some people just don't like me. And that's fine. That's, com that's completely okay. Like whoever you like, watch whoever you want to watch, live your life and live it well. Girl, I'm publicly speaking to you now that you will look like a fool to do this. A horribly structured sentence. These videos have already been made and proven false. That's not entirely accurate. 
there were a good amount of videos that I watched about her that the people did show fat. Absolutely. And then there were some that I watched and I was like, okay, where, when are you going to show proof? Like, what are you, what are you doing? Kind of like this post right here. Hopefully when she receives a letter from my attorney, she will figure out, figure out what? She made it clear on her channel that she doesn't like me and wants to expose me. So yes, I fully trust her to actually listen to anything I say. I'm sensing some sarcasm. You are correct. I, I do not like you. Keep in mind, I'm not the one exposing you. You have already exposed yourself. I am just putting it all together with my own commentary and my own opinions. So then after she posted all of that, she went on Facebook Live. Now, if you are a normal person, you probably have the video you're watching right now, this one with me, hi, sped up to 1.25, 1.5, something like that. Slow it down for just a second and then you can speed it back up after we watch this video because I am gonna be speeding her up just a little bit because this video is long and I don't wanna to have to listen to her for 26 minutes straight. I just like to come on and try to address things. I don't like to make my pages about drama. I don't like to make my page about responding to my personal drama or to um, attacks on like myself and responding to people attacking me. Listen, I am keenly aware that in my job, it's all about like, if you put yourself out there, people have a right to speak about you um, and have a right to say whatever they wanna say and never going to prevent someone from saying anything that they wanna say about me. She said that she doesn't wanna make her page about drama or responding to people who are attacking her. She has made multiple posts about Charlotte on the web, who she's gonna mention in a moment, and I will link her down below. And then also about the other creator that she previously mentioned in her Facebook response to me, LB. She's made multiple posts about her over the years as well. And then also Molly Go Lightly. I'm not a fan of Molly Go Lightly. I think that she's erratic. Don't like, I, I just, I don't like the way that she, perf I don't like the way that she takes things real life. She has allegedly harassed parents of a kidnapped little girl or something happened to their daughter. You can look it up. And then also she's mocked victims, like, like murder victims. And that was atrocious to see. She's just, it's not my cup of tea. If it is yours, wonderful, great. And people will say, or have said, oh, well, she speaks, you know, kindly of you. Okay. That's great. I respect her more for that because I have said to to her face, not to her face, but in DMs that I'm not a fan of her content and that's fine. I don't have to like her content. So not a part of it. I have a hate group. However, it is very interesting that Katie Joy says that she's not, you know, all about drama. She doesn't want that to be part of her page, her page meaning Facebook that she's going live on in this video that we're reacting to right now. I'm going to put on the screen right now all of the still public post that she has made about Molly Golightly, the other YouTuber who was and still is covering the Von McRae case. I have a video about that, about his wife. It's called The Downfall of Dre McRae. I'll have that link down below. Feel free to go watch it. It is one of my favorite deep dives I've ever done other than this one. Keep in mind, many, many more posts have since been deleted. Katie Joy is, in my opinion, notorious for deleting live streams, posts, Facebook posts, I mean anything. And therefore, I am of the opinion that she is really not a reliable narrator. It's okay to delete videos. It's okay to delete live streams, but the intention behind that is what's important. For instance, I didn't like the quality of a lot of my older videos. So as I started to grow, I was like, oh, Let's just private a bunch of these. And then there were a few videos where I maybe overshared. I am very big now about protecting my family. They are all private citizens. They do not need to be on my channel. I only have two friends that have, you know, signed appearance releases and they are okay with me tagging them on Instagram and, you know, posting them. And so those are the only two friends y'all will typically ever see on my Instagram. You will most likely never see my family. I'm okay with that they're okay with that. That's what I prefer. So I have gone through and cleaned up my account. Not because I said something incriminating. It's not because I accused anyone of anything. It's simply because typically that I want to clean things up and protect myself, you know, more for security and privacy reasons. In my opinion, that's not the case with Katie Joy. But of course, you can come to your own opinion on that. Let's continue, shall we? Um, I also have nothing to hide in my background. Like people keep saying to me like, well, what about your personal history or your criminal record? I don't have a criminal record other than a DUI from 2003, which I'm totally honest about. 
haven't had a ticket since. It's been almost 20 years. Um, and that is not relevant to me reporting at all. Um, in the case of this situation, criminal records matter. And a lot of the cases I cover, criminal history matters. And a part of my job is I evaluate and look at public records. Because when you're reporting on something, unless it's unless it's a documented, reported police report or a court record or a judgment or a filing, a lot of the other, or a property deed, I mean, that's factual information that you can present. That's a receipt you can show. Um, so looking for that information in any story is important. And why a lot of times in criminal cases, People don't cover cases until there's criminal charges, until there's an arrest, until there's a warrant, until there's literally something um, that's provable. That's why, for instance, when I covered the Dre McRae, Von McRae situation, I focused more on Dre McRae and all of her shenanigans. Yes, I, you know, talked about the incident, the accident, the attempt, rather, that her husband did that resulted in her husband being in a vegetative state. However, however, I was not on a live stream accusing someone of schmurdering their husband. Getting attacked for the way that I report is nothing new and having a, a hate group that follows me and stalks me and, and harasses me is also not new. This has been going on for as long as I've been on YouTube. If someone holding you accountable for your actions feels like an attack, it's probably because you're not ready to face or address what they're saying. Now there's obviously a huge difference between someone attacking you and someone simply holding you accountable. This is not an attack. I have seen people be very rude to her and attack her. Of course, that's part of being a creator. Absolutely. I have experienced it as well. When any creator becomes successful, they'll have hate threads, hate groups, things like that made about them. Grow up. It sucks. Yes. Is it right? No. Is it part of the job? Unfortunately, yes. But not everyone who's giving you constructive feedback or, again, holding you accountable for your in my opinion, and what I perceive as shitty behavior, that's not an attack. That's presenting information. And I'm not, what I'm trying to put out today is to show you guys that the players in the story that you're looking at are people that have been harassing me for years. And I've made mistakes going back three years ago. And I have literally had the same conversation a million different ways, but she never stops attacking me. And I don't address it on my channel. And I don't ever rarely even talk about her. So when I see that her moderators are harassing my followers, I'm going to say something. Because first of all, it's just really low for anyone to be contacting anyone's followers, spamming them, and trying to direct people away from another creator. Um, all of our creators are adults, and or all of our followers are usually adults, and they have the right to make their own decisions on who they follow. And if they don't want to follow someone based on someone else's reporting of them, that's, you know, everyone's an adult, and they can make a decision on who they like and who they don't like, right? And adults should be held accountable for their own actions. As creators, we can say all day long, do not go engage with this person. Do not go real life. Don't call CPS. Don't call the cops on them. Don't call their employer. Don't dig into their life. If you're doing that, if you feel like you should do that, throw your phone out the window and go take a nap. Because that's weird. Don't do that at all. Stop. Don't do that. I can say that all day long. And yes, I, I, I have done that. I have said that. And still, people can still do that because, because I'm not their dad. As much as I can try to tell them what to do, I can't tell them what to do. They're going to do it anyway. So you can't, you can't hold a creator accountable for the action of their followers at all. My putting out the email from CC Suarez, which was really weird because I guess yesterday she was on live and she's in with Charlotte on the web. No, not at all. Um, I, in my research and you know consuming a whole lot of content not only consuming far too much of katie's content but then also looking at court documents looking you know at other channels and i'm not taking anything that other channels say as a fact of course not i need to listen to what they say do my own research and figure out if there is any validity to what they actually are saying i really liked and still do like charlotte's channel she's got big beautiful eyeballs and her voice is soothing and she's funny and she's nice and all she does is react to the content that miss katie joy puts out and she does a really good job at engaging with her audience and i love that a lot <sighs> but let's hear what katie joy has to say about charlotte on the web charlotte on the web if you're not clear with her clear about her is a creator that has dedicated almost her entire channel to exposing me and has dug into almost every aspect of my life and listen i've never tried to sue her i've never struck her channel i've never done anything mostly i ignore charlotte because charlotte puts out information about me that's 100 percent false almost 99 percent of the time and feeds into wild conspiracies about me her channel has been built on um Charlotte on the web, if you're not clear with her, clear about her is a creator that has dedicated almost her entire channel to exposing me and has dug into almost every aspect of my life. And listen, I've never tried to sue her. I've never struck her channel. I've never done anything. Mostly I ignore Charlotte because Charlotte puts out information about me that's 100% false, almost 99% of the time, and feeds into wild conspiracies about me. 
her channel has been built on um, truly just false information about me. And so I'm told that Cece is like Charlotte. And so she's going to now expose me and she's sending me things of claims from three plus years ago. I have never engaged privately with Charlotte ever. I have engaged with her live streams before in the chat. I've given her a super chat before and that's it. That's it. We have never talked privately ever. So if you've got someone that you've had following you around for years and it's a group of people and they, they find new creators every five months to expose you based on the same false information, you would maybe be a little bit irritated when someone is fed the same false information over and over and over again. And you're like, listen, I didn't have a problem with you, Cece. I don't even know who you are really. I've seen a couple of her videos on MLMs and I saw that she had done some videos on Andrea. But beyond that, I don't subscribe to her. I don't follow her. I've never seen her, like until today, I've never seen her Instagram. Like I don't interact with people. And when I'm told by multiple people that she's active on Reddit's Again, this is just my interpretation, my opinion of what she's saying right now, but I am taking this as whenever anyone is like, I don't watch your channel, I've never heard of you, blah, blah, blah. Why does that matter? That, that doesn't matter at all. I'm seeing that and I'm not like internally taking it this way. It doesn't bother me, but I'm taking this as her saying like, I don't even know who you are. Mariah Carey, I don't know her. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are that are hate reddits against me she's actively collaborating with or talking to creators that have twisted information about me for years that tells me that, that there's no interest in her reaching out to me for anything of truth and the fact that she's sending me an email with claims that are provably false i will say this and i've been very open about this with every deep dive i do whenever i put someone on my list of uh deep dives that i am going to do for instance she has been on that list for i want to say like six months once I put them on that list, I will join the Reddit page about them if there is one. I will not join any like hate or gossip sites, but I will join if there is one, a Reddit, uh, their subreddit for them. For instance, I joined the Britney Dawn one as well because I am still currently working on a Britney Dawn deep dive. That video was supposed to be posted before this one, but thanks to Katie Joy's email response, this one got bumped to the top. I am in that Reddit page. My assistant at times will search uh, like Facebook or I mean Google or Twitter and Reddit. I love Reddit. Um, or and she'll search Reddit. And if there's, you know, my name or something, she'll send it to me. You know, if I'm being posted on a different subreddit, she'll send it to me and be like, do you want to respond to this? Or do you want to like engage with this? And yeah, sometimes I will. The only posts that I have engaged with in the Without a Crystal Ball subreddit page are the ones that actually talk about me. Anything of truth. And the fact that she's sending me an email with claims that are provably false. And if she just did a um, minute amount of research, she would know it was false. Um, it's just highly unprofessional to email someone a false claim and ask them to comment on it. Her job as a reporter would be to verify if the claim is true, first and foremost, before you present that information to the subject. Guess what, Catherine? I'm not a reporter. I am a commentary creator with a YouTube channel. I'm not a reporter. And honestly, it would be really embarrassing <laughs> if I called myself a reporter. Almost before you present that information to the subject, because the claim, one of the, several of the claims she's said to me are just provably false. Like if she wants to see my dashboard and sees how little I actually strike people, have at it. She can have access to my dashboard. I literally rarely ever strike anyone, ever because I just don't care. If I struck people, I would be striking Charlotte like every day and I don't. I would be striking all these creators that talk about me and I never do. I hardly ever respond to them because I don't care. But she can't strike Charlotte because Charlotte is reacting to Katie's videos that she has publicly put out there and giving her own commentary. So you, you would be falsely striking her. You can do that, but it's also a really shitty thing to do. And don't worry, we're gonna be obviously diving into doxing, copyright strikes, copyright claims, privacy claims, all of that momentarily, but because she put out all of these things within four hours of each other, I felt like I had to include them and respond to them and just systematically debunk what she's saying. I just don't like that every time a new story pops up, instead of the focus being on what we're covering, people in this hate group turn it around on me. Doesn't respond yet makes like almost one post a day for a month. Got it. And all I'm trying to do is tell you guys, like, listen, you can like who you want to like, but this is the history I have with these people. And this is why they're saying what they're saying about me. And they haven't been truthful. Like, we will consistently say, oh, you pulled her financials or you did this or you did that. It's done more to me than I can even care to explain and done so much more to me. Again, this is a great example of deflection. She already previously admitted that she looked into this creators and I'm going to have to like bleep out the other name out of respect again because it's not doxing but just out of respect for her because she has said over and over and over again to please not use her old name so i'm going to be respectful unlike this person but girl you've admitted <laughs> you've admitted that you looked into her financials so so just because someone does something that you don't like or 
people have claimed that they have done something that you don't like doesn't mean that you retaliate by looking into their okay public information but that you publish that information like that's that's wrong and again we're gonna go over that in a minute that has been so false and off the wall that it's like you pulled her financials. I only looked into her bankruptcy and lawsuits after the fact that she falsely accused me of child abuse and was going publicly with all of these false allegations against me. And we have been working together. And I'm like, why is she having a fundraiser? And is there a financial motive here? And I found the bankruptcy and I said, she has a bankruptcy. And that turned into, you you, um, you dug into my financials. No, I literally saw that you were going in a bankruptcy. That was it. Again, how would you have known that information? By specifically seeking it out. So yeah, you paid for access to a public document, public record, whatever. And then went one step further and posted that publicly. In my opinion, I'm not stating this as a fact or why she did this, but in my opinion, to humiliate someone and discredit them. And then when her police arrest was posted online, literally online, then it was, I'm digging into her police records. But yet this is a woman that has posted and talked about my rape. She's discussed my rape allegations and she says, and she's accused me of lying. She has um, gone as far as to publish every lawsuit that's ever been filed against me. She has accused me of child abuse. She has falsely accused me of planting drugs in her car. She's falsely accused me of setting her up for being arrested, which the ch charges were later dropped. She falsely accuses me of just about anything where I'm telling you to the point that we used to have a joke on my channel that if something bad happened life she would find a way to, to accuse me i have a question the hell does any of this have to do with me <laughs> again like i said before i will put in the description box lb's live stream that she did again it's like three and a half hours long but she she goes over all of this information and the thing about lb is that she or at least it doesn't seem like it that it doesn't seem like she's the type to delete live streams or delete videos and stuff like that so i i don't remember if, if in that video she like specifically showed like proof that she didn't do something or didn't say something again like how how would you prove that <laughs> feel free to go watch that video and she can stick up for herself i live in minnesota she lives in louisiana i've never met the woman in my life and i would have like it would be impossible for me to plant drugs in her car she on a right before christmas in 2019 she went live and told people that i struck her channel and i didn't it wouldn't be impossible it'd be improbable i never struck her channel i literally like woke up to a shit storm because overnight in the middle of the night she went live and accused me of having munchausen's by proxy which is accusing someone of child abuse i don't have munchausen's by proxy my child is not being abused and a lot of people reported her channel and youtube took the video down for community guidelines and then privately admitted to me that she deserved the strike and i have put out those text messages a million times i have put out all of our conversations which show that she has used her moderators to contact people that are connected to me to turn them against me i've put out all of this and none of this is stuff that i do to her i don't care i've asked her to move on we've had so many conversations privately where everything is fine and she, she agrees to let it go and then she turns around and like comes for me whenever she can make money charlotte has no motive to actually be honest about me because she makes money on my name has no motive to be honest about me because her channel has been built on haters of mine and so she will say anything about me because it makes her money and i don't care i don't care if she makes a million dollars on me none of these videos that any of these people have made have stopped my channel from growing have stopped me from continuing with my business and have stopped this platform from being taken down no matter how hard they try well katie i'm very happy that you just said that because that statement right there can now be used against you in your own defamation case. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not anything like that, right? But one of the elements of proving, and we're going to go over all of them in a moment. Don't you worry. Your sweet little tush, I promise. But one of the main factors or elements of defamation against the public figure is that you have to prove one malice but then also it's like one of the main ones but then also if she is suing someone for defamation she would have to prove that whatever that person did caused her to lose money and she just said that nothing any of these people say could cause her to lose would essentially and i'm paraphrasing here but could affect her channel in any way and i don't like to play these games with back and forth so when someone says to me well you said that charlotte was arrested and lost her kids and she's on probation and she's a felon yeah she is that's all true and charlotte has dug into every facet of my life so what everyone says to me katie what goes around comes around it's true charlotte what goes around comes around so if you're going to accuse me of abuse neglect of my children and you lost, you lost custody of your own kids and you have a felony and you're on probation right now really to that like dude glass houses again two things can be true at once and i'm not calling charlotte on the web a shitty person i i am not of the belief that she is hypothetically if someone is digging into your life and making all these claims about you and and all this and not showing any any little smidge or ounce of some type of proof yeah that makes them that makes them shitty and not i mean not a good person but then you attempting to discredit them by constantly bringing up aspects of their past while while leaving out some key points that's that's not good at all she said that charlotte lost custody of her kids all of charlotte's children are grown so what are you talking about something that happened 20 30 
40 years ago. Charlotte has addressed it on her page, so I'm not going to be the one to tell her story. She's a spicy one. She can stick up for herself. Charlotte plays a very good game on, on YouTube and plays the victim and like acts like everyone's doxing her when they talk about her life. But then when you, when she goes on her channel, she has no problem. She's talked about my rape. She's, she's talked about all these things, police records, um, every court document related to me. She's all put that out there. I haven't put anything other than she's a felon that's on probation and they're here. You can look her up on, on the Kentucky pro parole board. She's like listed as an offender. There's a clear difference between discussing court documents in regards to lawsuits, especially when it's involving multiple public figures and it's like, like big YouTube news. There's a very big difference of that. And then you retaliating to someone's commentary of you by releasing their criminal history. In my opinion, not stating this is a fact, but in order to discredit them. That's not okay, hypothetically, if that is what is happening here. That's her life, not mine. So why is someone who has that on her history criticizing my life where I've never been accused legitimately of child abuse? I've never lost my child. I've never had anything related to children neglect, period. But then she consistently accuses me of child neglect on, my, on her channel. Also, just to be clear, LB and Charlotte on the web, both of those creators have consistently claimed that they have not talked about her child her then like accused her of all of this and that that they have not done any of that or talked about her reports that she was discussing so i i would i would love for her to back up these claims and be like look they're talking about it here like if you're going to come for me like i can respond and i will if you're gonna pull records on me like, I'm a reporter. I can do that right back. I have a question for you, Katie. Why is it okay for you to give commentary on other public figures, hold their tax documents, look at their birth certificate, their divorce records, their property records. If HIPAA wasn't a thing, I'm sure you'd be looking at their medical records too. To my knowledge, she's never done that, hopefully. But why is it okay for you to do all of that regarding a public figure, but then when someone's giving commentary on you and showing public information, why is it then wrong? If you are throwing doo-doo out, you better be ready to be hit in the face with some poop, okay? So here's the thing. No matter if it Todd Chrisley or the 7M cult that is suing her. So no, I'm not worried about that. I'm also not worried about the other lawsuits. And they say it's multiple lawsuits, but it's not. It's one lawsuit and it's all together and they're all suing me at the same time. And again, not worried about it. Because again, everything was factually reported based on records and there's proof for everything. So I'm not here to like deal with petty bullshit from YouTube from years ago, which has been dissected and discussed so much on, on YouTube to the extent that like my followers, like every time they see a new creator covering this, they're like, what the hell are you doing? This is so old. This isn't even true. And so when someone like CC reaches out to me and she's like, I just want to give you a chance to uh, respond to this, things that she's asking me about, I've responded to a million times. And none of the things that she's accusing me of or the claims that I'm being accused of are true. And the, the, and the fact that she wants to somehow tie me to the nonsense channel, what is the nonsense channel doing? The nonsense channel is actually trying to show people um, what they perceive to be as fraud related to the GoFundMe and all of the fundraising surrounding the Marvon McCray story. They're putting out their receipts, all the information that they have. I am not them. I have nothing to do with them. But why would she care that I'm that? Is she not worried about what could be potential fraud and fundraising? Is, is this just a way to deflect away from the fact that that nonsense is doing something that she doesn't want them to do and she doesn't want to look at what could be potentially fraudulent fundraising? I don't know. But I'm not the story here. To me, you are. Also, the potential fraud and fundraising, that's not really something that I am interested in covering in regards to the Dre McRae and Vaughn McRae case because it's just too messy. I did state multiple times on my social media, on my YouTube channel, to not, to absolutely not donate to random PayPals, cash apps, anything like that. I've stated that multiple times. But again, in my opinion, I think that she would rather see me as someone who's like on the side of the hate groups and things like that when that's absolutely not the case. I'm not trying to deflect from anything. That's just not the deep dive that I'm doing right now. And I already made my deep dive about Andrea and Von McRae. It is interesting to me, though, that she just used the word deflect because that, to me, that's all she does is deflect. And I'm not nonsense. And then she said, well, you need to make claims that you didn't make money on the story. Has she made money on the story? Last time I checked, she's a monetized YouTube channel. Um, I've never said that my channel isn't monetized. I've said that repeatedly, that my channel is monetized. I repeatedly said that I've got a monetized Facebook page. Again, that wasn't the question. My channel is monetized. I did and continue to make money off of my deep dives, off of all of my videos and my live streams. The reason why I asked her that, and I specifically said claims that you have said that you do not make money reporting on or regarding your videos on the Von McRae situation is because she said that. She said that specifically. So we'll go ahead and play that clip. Keep going, Molly. I'll send you a cease and desist. I'll start a lawsuit. Quit it. Like none of this is necessary. I'm not gold digging when I'm not making money on this story. I just want to do my job and I've been working behind the scenes to help the father and I'm every turn I'm told that I'm doing, no, I'm drinking water. 
I don't I'm drinking water, not drunk. The family wants me to leave them alone. Why? Because Molly. I didn't do anything to the family. Okay, I'm messy. You can't claim to want to have people help and then push everyone out that tries to do this. Because I'm not making money doing this story. People keep accusing me of making money on my Instagram, on my Facebook. No, I donated more than I've made. Way more. This is not what I make my money on. I'm just fed up. I like literally had to sit there and go, do I need to have my lawyer send you a cease and desist for all the lies? And I've also said that I've donated money to people, including the father, the ex-husband of Andrea McCray. What I do on my platform is my business, just like her business, which is kindly and assertively a business. Sweet burn, Katie. She's referring to my email signature that says kindly and assertively because it used to just say kindly. I don't like that. So I changed it to kindly and assertively because if it just said assertively, people would be like, wow, this girl's a bitch. So it says kindly as well. Also, yes, you're right your monetization and what you put on your channel is your business. However, what you put out and publish publicly is also everyone else's business now because you've posted it publicly. I don't think she realized, or maybe she just has a bad memory, I don't know. I don't think she realized that I asked her that because she previously said that she doesn't make money on those videos about Vaughn. And it came off as her kind of trying to be like, oh, it's like altruistic and no, it's not. My videos aren't altruistic. No, no one's videos on YouTube when it's their full-time job is altruistic. Not at all. You make money because it's your job. So you're gonna put things out that perform well, that get you views because views equal money so that you can keep doing it because it's your job. Because, you know, we kind of need money to live. You're not going to tell me that she's making these videos out of the kindness of her heart because she's making no money. That's not how YouTube works. Everyone on YouTube that's doing this for their full-time job, this is a job, it's not a hobby. And that this is a LLC business for me. So I'm not interested in this, like, petty back and forth. And I'm also not interested in responding to claims that are so old, so false, and so tired. It's ridiculous. And then at the very end, she's telling me, I want to know if you're connected to nonsense and I want to know about the money. It's obvious it has to do with the story. Um, I actually didn't say it like that. <laughs> I said that there is speculation, and there is that you are the nonsense channel or that you have a connection to it. That's all I said. And also I didn't say that at the end of my email. I said at the end of my email that I'm not stating any of this as fact, but I think she might've just blown through that part. And I also didn't say, I need to know about the money. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> I didn't say that. I said claims that you have not made money off of these videos because she claimed it. Like it's, it's weird to twist someone's words so much when you posted the words that you are twisting within that same post. A little bit weird. It's obvious it has to do with the story. And it's obvious that there's something about the way that I'm covering the story that she doesn't like. Clear that she didn't watch my, my Trey McRae video because at the end of that video, I specifically said that I don't like the way that she's covering it and I don't like the way that Molly Golightly are covering it. And I think that they're going to real world and it's gross and they should be ashamed of themselves. However, me doing a deep dive on her has nothing to do with how she is covering this story. It's not just this story. You're gonna see in this video, I hardly talk about that. Actually, this is the only time I'm gonna talk about that because it's every story, Katie. It's almost every video. It's not just one story. It's almost all of them. And I don't know what that is, but it shouldn't matter. Everyone's entitled to have an opinion on a story and I'm not going to come for her and say like, well, you did this, 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 and this because I frankly don't care. I don't know anything about this girl at all. But the fact that she's talking to Charlotte, I, that's weird. And if you're using Charlotte as your source, if you're using Leslie Bass as your source, if you're using Steve McRae, if you're using Augie, if you're using um, any of those hate channels, the subreddit, all of that's false. I want to tell you something. Todd Chrisley used to those same people as sources. And you know what just happened this week? His podcast company pulled down every single podcast. He I don't know what an Augie is. I haven't gotten any of my information for this video from any of those people you just listed. I don't know who half of them are, actually. Todd Chrisley used to those same people as sources. And you know what just happened this week? His podcast company pulled down every single podcast he made about me because the information he disseminated on his podcast about me was false and defamatory. Every episode that he has made where he talks about me on his podcast, gone. And if it hasn't been removed, it's in the process. Not allowed to talk about me ever again on his podcast. So here's the deal. Like people keep saying like, he used those exact same sources. He used the subreddit. He um, got information from Steve. He got information from Leslie. He got information from all these haters and all of these same people, mind you, I'm suing Todd Chrisley for defamation. All of those same people that provided him information yesterday in a letter to his attorneys, we requested all the communication between Todd Chrisley and all creators that he spoke to about me. So if you were a creator and you spoke to Todd Chrisley and you provided him information about me that led to the defamatory content that he made, your, con your, your communications will be given to us because we've asked for that in discovery. So if you are doing this and you're actively sending him things, we'll find out. And then we'll know who's doing this and sending this to other creators. It's not like so much of the crap you guys are telling these people is easily provable and you're finding people that are mad at me and you're just ramping them up based on lies. Um, no one ramped me up at all. I'm not easily persuaded. I'm a pretty rational person and again, my main source for all of this is you, not anyone else. And then you're supporting someone like Todd who was just convicted of stealing $30 million from a bank. Multiple banks, by the way. And it's not even an allegation anymore. It's factual. 
It's factual in a court of law that he is a convicted felon and facing 30 years in prison for defrauding banks of $30 million and defrauding the U.S. government of taxes and defrauding um, conspiracy to defraud the United States over his tax evasion. Everyone wants to call this a tax evasion case. No, Todd Chrisley stole $30 million from banks. That's why he's going to prison. And that's why he'll go to prison for more than a couple years. So that's it. I don't, like, it's just going to be the repeat with Todd. So if people are going to keep regurgitating the stuff, that's why we're going to get the information. And the discovery letter that we sent is for every bit of communication he's had with any of you. And the fact that Cece is looking at the same crap and talking about the same shit, I know she's talking to the same exact people. And that's why I told her that my lawyer would be in touch with her. I don't have any interest in suing her. I just need her to know who she's dealing with. And I'm not, like, I didn't care about Todd Chrisley until he got arrested. I don't cover people that aren't doing bad. Like, I don't cover people for the sake of covering people. I don't go into, like, business to expose people. Like, I cover reality television. I cover a cult. And I cover Sister Wives, which is also a cult. Like, people that are doing legitimately bad things to people. Oh, that filter is crazy. I just realized I had a filter on the whole time. Okay, I look like a fool. No, you're lying about Leslie. Leslie's covered every lawsuit. She's contacted Todd Chris Lee. She's attempted to interfere in every part of my life. Well, if Cece knows her rights, then she should know that she shouldn't be involved in the people that she's involved with. Not everything that Charlotte says is true, and not everything that Cece says is true. And I always clarify if I have an opinion. So, um, everyone's laughing at me. Well, that's good. I actually have a lot of supporters. This is so funny. Goodbye. Leslie Bass was on a live stream asking for Todd's phone number and called his phone number. Leslie Bass and her moderators have reported me for a lot of different things that I haven't done. Um, it's really not funny. And one of the people that was got involved with this hate group was arrested for stalking. I didn't say there was a ruling that Todd can't talk about you. I said that his podcast company removed all podcasts about me and my name can't be talked about on his podcast anymore some of you guys i've never even seen before okay good night let me make this so absolutely clear again i was not stating anything in that email as a fact as i said at the bottom of the email but of course instead of katie joy responding no comment or just simply saying that is all false decided to make not only a facebook post but a facebook live stream and a instagram live stream full of deflection where she not only twisted my words which is weird because she included my words <laughs> the email within that facebook post but as you just saw she did that live stream accusing me of being in contact with people that i am not in contact with and i've already previously stated in this video the emails that i sent out who I sent them out to, and that I have not spoken privately to any of the people that she just listed. That is all 100% false. As I said, Katie Joy has been on my list of public figures to do a deep dive on for almost a year. As I said, I've only commented on the Without a Crystal Ball Reddit page a few times, and only on posts that involve me, that say my name in them. I've watched Charlotte on the web's live streams and engaged a few times in the chat, of those live streams and never spoken to her privately, ever. And as I've already said 14 times, I have never spoken privately to LB, the other creator that she keeps referencing by her previous legal name. I did send her an email for a response and she did not respond. Again, that's fine. And I know this may come as a shock to all of you, but I have never communicated with any of the members, no matter how high or low ranking, of the 7M media company, dance, cult, whatever you want to call it, with Tati Westbrook, Todd Chrisley, or anyone in the Chrisley family, or with any other individual, private or public, or any entity that has been or is currently involved in legal matters with Katherine Paulson, also known as Katie Joy, or the Without a Crystal Ball channel. Since Katie Joy wants to talk about defamation and loosely accuse me of it, why don't we talk about what defamation actually is. More specifically, defamation against a public figure. In 1964, the Supreme Court in New York Times Co. v. Sullivan introduced the framework of the treatment of public and private plaintiffs in libel cases. Ultimately, the Supreme Court held that there were two types of defamation plaintiffs, public and private, and that the First Amendment established a different burden of proof needed to be met in order to succeed in a defamation claim one for each type of plaintiff. In its subsequent decisions, the Supreme Court has redefined and delineated the differing standards applicable to private and public libel plaintiffs. Now, in that New York Times versus Sullivan case, a police chief brought a defamation claim regarding a newspaper. The Supreme Court held that for a public official to succeed on a defamation claim, the public official plaintiff must show that the false defaming statements were said with, quote, actual malice, end quote. The Sullivan Court stated that actual malice means that the defendant said the defamatory statement with knowledge that it was false or with reckless disregard of whether it was false or not. They also held that when the statement is actual malice, the plaintiff must prove 
actual malice by clear and convincing evidence, rather than the usual burden of proof in a civil case. Now, Katie Joy has been sued for defamation by not only Tati Westbrook, but also more recently by the 7M media company, or Colt, as I said, and then also, much more recently, by Todd Chrisley, U.S. businessman and reality star. Now, with the Tati case, Katie has claimed herself that it was ruled that no defamation took place and that a joint statement was released. Due to her alleged exclusive source being Tati and her husband's ex-business partner, who has repeatedly been trying to extort them and just, it is a whole mess, it's so sad. But per Katie's own words, she claims that he was leading her to believe that all of this was true and that he was manipulating her, I guess. Here's the thing though, in this thing is my own opinion. I am not a lawyer, as you know. This is all just my interpretation of all of these cases and all of these legal matters. Just my own interpretation, just my opinion, not legal advice, not legal fact. I am not a legal representative of anyone. Even if it was ruled that no defamation took place, you still said the thing. You, you still were on a live stream saying that you were looking into Tati's birth certificate and then trying to find her dad's birth certificate but couldn't find anything out about her dad. Her dad's a, pri a private private individual, a private person, not a public figure. What are you doing? And all of that is in regards to her, her supplement line, her vitamin line. Why would you ever need to look into her dad or her birth certificate? Like why? That's weird. Isn't that weird? That's weird. As you probably know, Katie has the tendency to say things like this, admit to things like this, say not the most professional things on live streams, whether it be on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, and then delete them right after. But if I've learned anything during my time of being an influencer, it would be that the internet does not forget. Regarding 7M and their leader, owner, whatever you want to call him, Robert Shen, she accused them of sex trafficking allegedly multiple times and all on a live stream. And then also allegedly, and this is awful, but made the claim that Tati's husband pulled the plug on one of his family members in order to financially like profit or financially gain from that. Also, regarding Todd Kersley, I know it's not illegal to speculate on a public figure's sexual orientation, but that is what she did with Todd Grisley or has done over the years, and it's not illegal. However, in my opinion, it's extremely unprofessional. Katie has been referring to herself as a reporter for years. So I have a platform and I'm sharing the story. I'm sharing the information. I'm a blogger, reporter. This is what I do. The title reporter, in my opinion, has more of a positive connotation to it, opposed to drama channel or hell, even commentary YouTuber like I am. Now, people have said that she can't be a reporter because she's not employed by anyone. She doesn't work for like a media company or anything like that. You can be an independent reporter, 100%. Absolutely, you can be. And you can be an independent journalist, reporter, whatever you want to call it, and still be professional and credible. In my opinion, from what I've seen, I would not consider without a crystal ball to be either of those things. I do think that how Katie reports is lazy and unprofessional. As I've already stated, she tends to dig into information that is not relevant to the topic at hand whatsoever. For instance, she looked into Jeffree Star's tax information, like his property tax information. Unless you are doing a video on Jeffree Star's house or his expenses, I guess, it doesn't make sense for you to even look that up much less share it on the internet. And yes, I understand that it is public information. That doesn't mean it's not weird that you're sharing it for for no purpose. It does not further your investigation or your reporting or anything like that. It doesn't make you more credible. It just it just makes you creepy. There have been multiple instances where Katie possibly because she's in a rush to put out the content as fast as she can, where she has not censored addresses, primarily addresses on public documents that she has obtained, tax information, property deeds, arrest records, court documents, police reports, things like that. And yes, many times she will correct herself, but especially with someone who has such a large following, you would think that you would triple, quadruple check all of that before posting such sensitive information. 
And either way, even if she has caught herself, I could see it happening once, maybe twice. Three times is a stretch, but it's happened more times than that. And it's not okay. Now, thanks to the internet these days, if you realistically, if you want to find out information about someone, you can do it pretty easily. However, I do think that it's reckless and like I've said a billion times already, unprofessional for her to do so, especially when it comes to private citizens who may be part of a public story. But again, that doesn't mean that it's not a shitty move for you to post the criminal history and mugshots of a family member of someone that you are doing a story on, like she's done with the Von McRae story. She posted his father's criminal history, which has arguably, in my opinion, nothing to do with this story and doesn't further anything at all. Now, unfortunately, it's not just the people that she's doing these stories on and their family members who have had their private information shared by Katie, whether it is on a public document or not, but it has been alleged for years that Katie Joy has a habit of doxing fellow creators, big and small. Now, if you're not familiar with all the hip internet lingo, you might not know what doxing is. So let's go over that. Doxing is the act of publicly revealing previously private personal information about an individual or organization, usually via the internet. Methods employed to acquire such information include searching publicly available databases, social media websites, hacking, and social engineering. The purpose of doxing is to punish, intimidate, or humiliate the target. And that target could be anyone, especially if you're Katie Joy. Doxing can be used for extorting money, using personal data, or to create a negative public opinion about a person. Some doxers see their actions as a way to right perceived wrongs or to bring someone to justice in the public eye. Now, is doxing illegal? The short answer is no. The definition of doxing is a little bit vague for good reason, because obviously it does depend on intention, but realistically, no doxing is not illegal, especially in this age of the internet, but the laws haven't really caught up to the social media world that we're living in right now. Releasing personal information that is technically publicly available and obtained, illegal and obtained legally is not a crime. But like I said, I think it's the intention that matters. For instance, here's a good example for you. I was accused of doxing someone on Instagram. And because you know I like to show receipts, as I explain this, I will go ahead and show all of the Instagram stories on the screen right now. So I did one of those anonymous ask me anythings on Instagram and someone had posted on there and said, you blocked me on Twitter because, and all I did was ask a question. And I know that I only have one person blocked on Twitter. So I knew who it was. Realistically, they led me there. So I went to her profile, unblocked her and scrolled her post to see all of the rude things that she had said about me to prove her wrong and to really make the point of why it's important to get the full story and to not just believe a comment about someone or some random claim that someone is making. So from her Twitter, I was actually able to find out what her Instagram name was because she had posted a DM conversation between me and her. So I went back into my Instagram inbox, searched a keyword that was included in that DM conversation that we previously had and bingo, our conversation popped right on up. So then I posted the entire process of all of that and some of the awful trolling posts that she had made about me, some of which include calling me a see you next Tuesday. I couldn't include all of them just because it would have been pretty ridiculous and way too long. She called me a narcissist, twisted my words a bunch, so on and so forth. And once I found that DM conversation between us, obviously I was able to see her profile. Her profile was private. I was not following her, so I could not see anything. I took a screenshot of, of her account. All it said was her username. I did not know that was her legal name. She decided to put her legal name as her username. Even if, you're, even if your profile is private, if you choose to have your legal name as your username, you therefore forfeit to having your name private and off of social media. That's not the point though. Um, so you couldn't even see anything. All you could see was her username. Again, I didn't know that it was her legal name. I also don't care. And then her profile picture, which was obviously small. And then a, of course, Jesus quote in the bio. It's always the ones with the Jesus quotes, right? So of course I posted that on one of my Instagram stories as well. 
And I said, if you hate me, why are you following me? I was then accused of doxing. Legally, that is not doxing. Also, it was not my intention to intimidate, punish, humiliate, or target her at all. My intention was to prove a point that sometimes people will say things like, you did this to me and you did this, or you blocked me for no reason, or you were so rude to me, blah, 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 without showing proof, and just make all of these egregious claims about people that can spread a false narrative about them, or that they block people for no reason. Plot twist, anyone can block anyone for any reason. It doesn't matter. It's the internet. It's fine. I also consulted with not only my own lawyer, but multiple other lawyers and multiple content moderators who actually work for Twitter, TikTok, and Meta, all of which have agreed that it is not doxing to release someone's name. And that specifically, in that situation, I was not doxing somebody. Katie Joy has been accused of doxing a lot. Not every claim, though, was valid. For instance, showing a DM that you received, along with the username of who sent it, that's not doxing. That person sent you that DM. That's not doxing at all. Sharing someone's picture without their name, it's not doxing either. For instance, one time, Katie posted or retweeted or something, um, someone who was, I guess, trolling her, someone she just didn't like, and said, oh, you're from here, you're, you need a new face or like something, 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 and people accused her of doxing. However, and some people aren't going to like that I'm kind of siding with her on this specific instance, she even retweeted and said, this is not doxing. All of the information that Katie saw, all of the information that she said regarding that lady, yeah, it wasn't nice, but all of that information was on that lady's profile already, publicly, so not doxing. Also, in regards to the creator LB, there are so many people who claim that Katie Joy is doxing LB by calling her by a name that she used to go by. That is not doxing. I hate that I'm even like chuckling right now, but that's not doxing. Just releasing a name is not doxing. Also, LB publicly previously went by that name, so therefore it's not doxing. Is it disrespectful? Yeah, it is. But it's not doxing. However, sharing someone's name with their address, name with their phone number, name with their criminal history, their mug shots, not censoring out addresses, all of that is doxing. Absolutely. For sure. But of course, like I said, not everything is doxing. Not everything is harassment. And it's really important to look at intention. And it's very important to look at the legal definitions of things. Otherwise, we're going to get to the point where just looking at someone is doxing. No, I'm not saying she hasn't doxxed people. She absolutely has. For sure. <laughs> there's, liter there's literal proof of her doing it. However, as I said, not all doxing claims are valid. Either way, Katie will justify her actions, saying what she shared was public information, or <laughs> she will deflect, the queen of deflection, and say, well, they're digging into my life or they did XYZ to me. Am I the bad guy because I did it? As I've already said, if you are sharing information that is directly related to the topic at hand that you are covering, then okay. However, from what I have seen, it is my opinion that Katie will weaponize people's pasts and their past actions, maybe even unfavorable past actions, in order to discredit whatever they are saying, in order to attack the individual instead of actually addressing their argument or anything that they said. Attack the argument, Katie, not the person. Now, this is actually known as an abusive fallacy, more commonly known as an ad hominem. A great example of this, as we've seen many times, is when she brings up Charlotte on the web's criminal history. And I hate even calling it that, but let's just call it that. Katie claims that Charlotte on the web lost her kids and is on parole and in my opinion, conveniently does not elaborate on that, possibly because she doesn't know the actual story. The thing is, is that a lot of times a police report, especially from back then, won't tell the whole story of what situation that person was in, what type of vulnerable state they were in, maybe an abusive relationship. Who knows? Not me, because I'm not digging into people's past to try to discredit them because it's not relevant to what we're talking about. But anyways, um, in my opinion, she does this specifically with Charlotte, because she doesn't want us to listen 
to anything that Charlotte says because if Charlotte is a felon, then therefore, or has a criminal history, then therefore whatever she says is not credible. So by that logic, we shouldn't see anyone with any type of criminal history, any type of rap sheet, any type of arrest as a credible source, right? Well, then what about Katie Joy? Because she has even admitted that she has a decade old or however old DUI charge that she says that she's transparent about and it doesn't matter. But you but you just use someone's criminal history to not only deflect, but in my opinion, attempt to discredit them. In my opinion, this is extremely hypocritical and the hypocrisy does not stop there. It's time to move on to false strikes and claims. Now there are multiple different types of claims and strikes in regards to YouTube content. So there's copyright strikes, copyright claims, and privacy claims. So let's go ahead and go over those. Because if you're not a creator, it can kind of be confusing. YouTube's privacy policy states that if a video contains your personal identifiable information without your consent, you can file a complaint through the process on YouTube's privacy guidelines page. Personal information can include your image, name, national identification number, your or your social security number, bank account number, contact information, or other uniquely identifiable information. However, if someone is a public figure, those rules don't really apply to them completely. And that also pertains to people who are not necessarily like recognized public figures, but if they are portraying themselves as a public figure. For instance, if I was to include a picture of my cousin, or include my cousin in a video. She is, by all means, a private citizen. She's not newsworthy. She's not involved in any like public situations or anyone in my family for that matter. If me or someone included them in a video without their consent, they would be able to submit a privacy claim on any YouTube video that did that. And then YouTube will email the creator the owner of the video and say that there was a privacy claim and then the YouTube team is going to review it. And if it does violate that privacy policy, then of course they will take it down. And if you have blurred everything correctly, then they'll leave it up. But, but it of course is always better to ask for consent. However, if I'm covering a public figure, a celebrity, an influencer, or even someone on social media platforms who is publicly sharing their information in order to, let's say, recruit people into that false opportunity and they're presenting themselves as a public figure, then I can include them in my video without having to blur their face. If you yourself have made information or content public, including your name, such as an email, a photos, a post, a video, a YouTube channel showing that information would not be grounds for a privacy claim. And keep in mind, in regards to these claims and strikes, this is only pertaining to the YouTube policy. Other platforms have different policies, but we're just focusing on YouTube. Time to talk about copyright strikes. What is copyright? In many countries, when a person creates an original work that is fixed in a physical medium, they automatically own copyright to the work. As the copyright owner, they have the exclusive right to use the work. Most of the time, the copyright owner can say whether someone else has permission to use said work. Basically, someone can't just re-upload your work, and if they do, you can submit a copyright claim or a copyright strike to YouTube. A copyright claim means that the owner of the content will be claiming ownership, basically meaning that they will receive the AdSense revenue from that video. The video is not removed from YouTube, it's still on your channel, you just are not reaping any of the benefits from it, and they are. This happens pretty often with copyrighted music being used in videos. For instance, y'all know that if I am reacting to a reel or a TikTok in one of my videos, I will silence the music, or sometimes if it's like a longer video and it has what I think could be copyrighted music, then I will have my editor, Ethan, either silence the clip as I'm reacting to it or put in like dorky music or scary music or something like that, that is copyright free so that I am not being copyright claimed. Because let me tell you, that sucks. <laughs> a copyright strike is much more serious than a copyright claim when you are a content creator on YouTube. With a copyright strike, your channel can be suspended for repeat copyright offenses. If you get a copyright strike, it means that the copyright owner submitted a complete and valid 
legal takedown request for using their copyright protected content. When YouTube gets this type of formal notification, they take down your video to comply with copyright law. And when that happens, you don't have like any access to it. So on like the creator side from our like creator studio, the back end of YouTube, we can't touch it. We like, it's just like grayed out basically. And like, we can't see anything about it. We can't fix it, edit it, nothing. Remove it, download it, it sucks. I thankfully have not had that happen. I've had copyright claims on a lot of videos, but that's not really a big deal. It doesn't affect your channel. It just affects the monetization for that specific video and that's it. However, we need to go over the Fair Use Act because if it wasn't for the Fair Use Act, I would not have a job. Fair Use is a legal doctrine that says you can reuse copyright protected material under certain circumstances without getting permission from the copyright owner. In its most general sense, a fair use is any copying of copyrighted material done for a limited and transformative purpose, such as to comment upon, criticize, or parody a copyrighted work. In other words, fair use is a defense against a claim of copyright infringement. So what is transformative use? If this definition seems vague or ambiguous, be aware that millions of dollars in legal fees have been spent attempting to define what qualifies fair use. There are no hard and fast rules, only general guidelines and varied court decisions because the judges and lawmakers who created fair use, who created the fair use exception, did not want to limit its definition. Like free speech, they wanted it to have an expansive meaning that could be open to interpretation. Most fair use analysis falls into two categories, commentary and criticism or parody. I am commentary and criticism. So here is a great example. Once again, I have submitted a copyright strike or two. Not falsely, might I add. There is a certain, not follower shaming, but a, a very small channel who will download videos of content creators, of commentary creators, and just re-upload them, either as reels or just the whole video. They'll like splice it up and do like weird zooms and weird edits, but just re-editing a video without actually adding any commentary, any comments on it, especially ones that like aren't even on the screen, that is not transformative at all. That's just you taking someone else's content and re-uploading it to, I don't know, try to prove something. Real weird, especially because that specific video, the whole thing's on my channel. Doesn't make any sense. So yeah, absolutely. I submitted a few copyright strikes on that channel and their channel was taken down. I don't know if it was just because of me, because I know a few other creators did it as well, because they realized, oh, she's just re-uploading my videos and that's it. That is not protected by fair use. I have gotten so tired of this person doing it. I recently called her out in a live stream, actually multiple live streams, and I specifically said to her, if you are going to do it again, you will get copyright striked again. However, if you do a voiceover and add your own commentary, you will be protected by the Fair Use Act. So please, for the love of God, do that. And she did. She released a, in my opinion, a dog shit video with not good points at all. It was very strange. And am I going to have it taken down? No, because I'm going to follow the rules and that would be very hypocritical of me to have a commentary video taken down just because I think it's annoying or don't like what the person's saying. I wouldn't do that. You can just ask any of the other people who have made videos about me. I've never copyright claimed or copyright striked any of their content. Further, in my opinion, it would be extremely hypocritical for Katie Joy to do that same thing, especially since she plays clips of not only other creators, of celebrities, of reality stars, even using parts of shows and other media. It would be very hypocritical of her to do that. And yet, here I am making this video. Even further than that, I think it's really sleazy and gross and really shows your character if you are going to submit a privacy claim when you are a public figure or presenting yourself as such. If you're going to submit a privacy claim for a video because you can't get it taken down for copyright because it's under fair use, but if you're going to try to have it taken down for violating the privacy policy when it clearly doesn't, just to have or try to have the video taken down, hypothetically, that's so gross. Why would you do that? Now, that exact reason is why I included an extra title card at the beginning of my videos. I have my normal, you know, defamation and fair use copyright one. That's the first one that says disclaimer in a pretty font. And then I have the second one, which is my privacy one. 
Now, a few days ago, I believe it was a day after I emailed Katie, she posted on her Without a Crystal Ball Facebook page claiming that she has never falsely submitted a strike or a claim on anyone's channel and then that she doesn't know when the last time she did it was. And then she showed a picture of her dashboard. And then it says here, as promised, I said I would show my dashboard to prove how infrequently I filed copyright removal requests. The last time I requested a removal was August 4th, 2021, when a creator uploaded a video of mine that I had privated. They simply uploaded the full video, no commentary, no fair use, nothing. And hey, if that's the case, rightfully so. I'm right there with you. The video was already removed before anything could be done to the channel. Previously to that, I struck a channel that was simply re-uploading my Instagram lives with no commentary and monetizing the channel with my content, which is not fair use. I do not strike channels or abuse the strike process. I also don't claim videos because I don't have a network to claim my content. I don't care about people using clips of my content. I don't care if people criticize me. It seems like you care. There are a lot of reasons to be mad at someone, but at least get your facts straight before spreading rumors. I am of the opinion that this post is deceptive. Why is the image cropped? For instance, here's mine, the whole page. You can see at the top, copy, uh, channel copyright, and then at the bottom, um, looking for a copyright claim, you know, made on your video, blah, 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 video list, and then um, wrote, you can clearly see that that's all that's ever happened on my channel. Now, these top three are the ones that I are the ones that I explained earlier, how the person was just re-uploading my content. And then the the bottom two were real weird. It was like an old ass video of mine that someone just re-uploaded and I was like, what the fuck? That's weird. The screenshot, thanks to the internet, I was able to find the screenshot of Katie Joy's previous copyright strikes. The weird thing is this was done in June of that same year. So why didn't she just, why didn't she just fully show that? It, that's weird, right? Maybe I'm thinking too much. It just seems weird. So this creator had five videos, which were considered transformative, according to what I have previously seen that this creator posted and that they posted in regards to this. And from what others have said as well, they said that there were, you know, like text comments on the side. And then also the last one that Katie Joy allegedly copyright striked was like the person's voice saying that she was copyright striking the channel and then this person's channel got taken down because it was five copyright strikes now the thing about copyright strikes and privacy claims and and all that with youtube is youtube doesn't always make the right decision which sucks <laughs> absolutely sucks now like i've said many times and katie has said many times she has referred to herself as a reporter all over social media. But what is a reporter? Well, if you Google it, reporter is someone who reports. Super helpful, especially one who has been employed to report news or conduct interviews for newspapers, broadcasts, for media outlets, things like that. As I've already said, you can be a legitimate and professional, incredible reporter, journalist, even if you are independent. You don't have to be employed by a media outlet, much less a like big media outlet. Doesn't matter. Now, I create commentary content, which means that I express my opinions and give explanations about events and individuals in certain situations, especially public figures. That sounds pretty similar to what Katie Joy does, right? Now, in my opinion, I'm not stating this as a fact. How dare you assume anything of the sort? I'm of the belief that Katie Joy refers to herself as a reporter because she believes that she will then have more privileges and protections in regards to the information and content that she releases. This is Jim, Bob, and Michelle have bred 19 crotch fruits and Michelle would probably have more goblins come out if she could, but I'm pretty sure her uterus is shriveled up and dead. Um, so I was like, dude, let's talk about what the Duggars are doing or the Duggars or whatever you guys. And then that's the other thing. If I don't pronounce something perfectly, you get mad at me. If it's Duggar or Duggar, I really don't care. Like these people are so silly to me. <laughs> or I'm sorry, Jana. Oh, poor Jana. Jana's 29, you guys. Jana is 29 years old and still single. Jana doesn't want to get married. Jana is probably a lesbian, but has to live in like sadness because they hate they hate the gay people. Or, yeah, is, it? is that her safe word? 
Do you think that's Michelle's safe word? Daddy. 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 Alright, now, Jill. My least favorite of the girls. I hate Jill. I hate her so much. Because she's married to Derek. And Derek's such a... Ugh. I hate Derek. I hate him. I mean, who knows? Maybe some of the Duggar fans do want some beads or something. I don't even know. <laughs> Maybe they want some whips and chains. Maybe they want... I don't know why beads came out of my brain. Now, I do think that it's strange and from my research and my meandering around the internet, it seems that I'm not the only one who thinks this way, but I think it is quite odd, some may even say convenient, that even when Katie's channel was much smaller than it is now, she was claiming to have exclusive sources who were always a source close to the family, a source close to the couple, a source close to the situation. It seems as though she would say that no matter what topic she was covering. And that's just for what, from what I've seen. Might not be accurate, might not be true, but that's just my opinion. Even now, there are channels that are much more credible, much more professional, much less messy, and can overall, in my opinion, have a more positive impact, not only in regards to publicity, but also just potentially moving things forward for whatever case in question. So if there are a bunch of other channels out there who make much better content, if there are those options out there, why does it seem like Katie Joy, without a crystal ball, always the one with that exclusive source? Would it be because they're seeking her out? Or because she, potentially, hypothetically, is crossing boundaries and contacting the people involved in whatever topic, situation, case that she's covering, or people close to those individuals. And many other creators, that I know of at least, wouldn't do that. Again, because that's weird. Now, if someone reaches out to you, I do feel like that's a little bit different. You know, if they want to share their story, if they, you know, want your help. Okay, but you seeking, see, like seeking people out is a little bit weird. I am not stating that her sources don't exist or that they aren't credible. I just don't know if they are. It, it's a big question mark. It's not a statement. It's a question. <sighs> Speaking of sources, many of Katie's live streams and many of her posts, she has claimed that if you get any information from anyone who doesn't like her or <laughs> this subreddit page dedicated to her, that all of it is false and that you will be biased if you engage with any of that, even just to ask questions or if you get any information from there. Uh, that is false and an overgeneralization. Absolutely. Now, I get it. There's people out there that don't like me. There's hate threads about me. There's videos made about me that are not very nice. There's a lot of mean comments. But here's the thing. Most of those, like with me at least, they're just sharing their opinion. And they're allowed to have their opinion. They're allowed to not like me. But also, just because someone does not like you doesn't mean that every time they speak about you, they are going to be giving out false information. That's not always true. Two things can be true at once, Katie. I cannot like you, which is true. And I can also share facts, show proof, and also give my opinion. That's also true. Now, hate threads, hate videos, all that, it sucks. <laughs> it, it does suck. It's very important to not watch those. Don't even look at them. Don't do it. I now... <laughs> have certain websites blocked from my computer so that I can never look at them again and from my phone too because it's just not it's just not a good space for you to put yourself in it's not a safe space for you it's not with all those like like really really rude <laughs> opinions about you and with those types of people who are gonna just hate you for no reason or every reason you could show them absolutely cold hard facts proof to their face explain everything to them debunk everything they're saying maybe even agree with them on a few things and they would still not like you and disagree with you on everything oh well is it part of the job yes is it fair no does it suck absolutely do you have to buck up buttercup and get over it yeah yes you're allowed to have your opinion but spreading false information about someone is just not good. <laughs> it's just not okay. Especially when you're just blatantly assuming things about their lives that 
you have no proof of. Are you there? Do you live with them? Are you with them all day long? No, you're not. So shush. Please shush. Please. How, how would you like it if someone constantly posted about you being an alcoholic or your arms being fat or saying that you're insecure or that you don't work hard because because you're someone in your family has money when actually you do work really hard and they don't know how your family dynamic is they don't know anything about your marriage they don't know how much you do or don't drink also none of their business even if you did have a problem which i don't there were a lot of threads comments posts videos all about just strong accusations wouldn't even say they're strong accusations they were just like ugh, in your face accusations um regarding her chin now that's all i can look at now thanks but um about like her chin um she had like bruises right here in one video and so then they were insinuating domestic abuse um videos all about um speculation regarding her husband being um being a nazi or something like that which i will say it's some of his hobbies and books on his shelf literal books on his shelf and his four-star review of hitler's book is weird don't get me wrong i've wanted to read it for research purposes like for a video but giving it a four-star review is weird <laughs> and also like is he doing research i don't i don't think so i, I don't know i honestly don't know but um yeah that's kind of that's kind of weird but but like i said there are claims about her marriage about child abuse about like how she handles her I don't want to say handles her son, but her relationship uh, with her son, her parenting tactics, alcoholism, substance abuse, talking about like Adderall and stuff. Do you even know if she's on that? Are you there with her every morning when she takes it? If she does? No, you're not. So you don't know. And then of course, <laughs> one of my true favorites, the unprofessional mental health diagnoses. There's a lot of that and that's annoying. I, I have even said before like, oh, well, this could be a trait of this sure i guess that's okay but saying like oh someone is this or someone definitely has this illness uh that's wrong don't do that now i know that some people may be disappointed with this video that you know i didn't go into like way back into her previous lawsuits her like previous drama with other channels i wanted to focus on like the now and things that i've seen and things that i absolutely don't like about her and things that i could possibly prove again who knows all these screenshots could be faked however they don't look like it <laughs> definitely don't look like it she can also claim that they're all fake but but it is pretty easy to tell when a screenshot of like a tweet an instagram post a youtube video a facebook post anything like that has been like doctored or edited or you know photoshopped basically also most of these were still available on like on the internet from the person who posted them so oh well it's okay to have your opinions that's fine just don't be a dick you know but like i said there are probably going to be people who are disappointed that you know i didn't dive into her personal life and all that i would be no better than her if i did that if you haven't watched a deep dive video of mine before then maybe you wouldn't know that that's not how i do my deep dives i typically focus on the facts of course i give my opinion but i make sure it's very clear and I'm not making ridiculous accusations. I'm not doing any of that. And personally, y'all know I've said it a million times, one thing that I really do like to do is let the subject of the of my deep dive do the talking, as I say, meaning using clips from their own videos, from their own social media to prove a point or have them contradict themselves or something just absolutely blasphemous that they claimed or said or whatever. So that's how I approach deep dives. I'm not a drama channel. I'm a commentary channel. Now it's time for my final thoughts. In my opinion, Katie Joy of the Without a Crystal Ball YouTube channel is reckless, annoying, and absolutely does not make good content. I also think that she hides behind the title reporter in order to evade responsibility for her actions. Those are all just my own opinions. You can obviously do your own research and come to your own conclusion regarding Katie Joy without a crystal ball and her content. Now, if you've watched this whole video, you can clearly see that I tried to clear things up, didn't lie about her, especially since an opinion can not be a lie, it's an opinion. So I didn't claim anything false about her. I did not 
harass her, bully her. This was not a hit piece. I didn't Photoshop anything or edit anything to, in order to make her look worse. I also didn't make myself look like a fool like she claimed that I would. I did not dig up anything from her personal past. I focused on her professional past. I didn't dig up anything about her life either. Any public information that I would have had to dig for. And I have never talked to Todd Chrisley or been in cahoots with anyone. I was not trying to expose her, deplatform her. I certainly did not defame her in any way. No libel or slander took place here, which this, in this case, it would be, or in this case, libel, which it is not, but because it's a YouTube video. Anyways, so if she says that I did so, if she tries to copyright strike, privacy claim, copyright claim, sue me for defamation, come after my family. And if you made it to this part of the video, you will absolutely see that there's no basis for that. There's no justification for that. Now, unless she comes for me and, you know, lies about me, if there's anything I need to clear up or react to, okay, I may do another video. It won't be a deep dive, but if not, this will be my last video on her. When it comes to deep dives, I am very much so a one and done type of gal. I am not interested in associating with her, speaking with her publicly, privately, professionally, personally, any of that. I want nothing to do with her. Just like most professional and credible YouTube channels, in my opinion. So thank you for watching this video. Make sure you do subscribe if you are new here. Just do it. Just subscribe. You know you want to. Because if you made it to the end of this video, I doubt most people did. <laughs> that means you are spicy. Congratulations. Look at you. Look at you go. So comment down below a seductive seal. It's the gray seal that's like leaning over. He wants you to paint him like one of your French ladies. Comment that down below and I will know that you made it to the end of the video. That'll be our little secret. Have a great day, night, weekend, whenever you're watching this. Remember how valuable you are. You look great. You're doing great. This is temporary if you're not feeling too good, okay? You'll get through it. You're valuable. Your feelings are valid. And I'll see you in my next video.